explaining the relationship between force and acceleration. And uh, I wonder how, Yanqing, do you learn physics back in school? Did the teacher do the same kind of experiments in class? Sure, I just mentioned the teacher in ground is my uh, high school physics teacher. So we have to do the same experiments in the classroom before. But now, uh, when we study physics, there is a concept called controlled group, which means there are variables in the in an experiment, and we change a single single variable while keeping the others the same. And this way, we can determine which variable uh, which variable will affect the experiment. And he, he, but we never face this situation. The gra gravity of this variable changes, so. I think everything has changed since the gravity is equal to zero here. Now we've got another question from our student uh, in the classroom on the ground. Uh, he was asking if the astronauts would have a sense of direction in space. And uh, the assistant, actually he is the commander of the Shenzhou 10 space mission, is turning our teacher around upside down. And you see, in space, we do not have a very keen sense of direction. Whether we are heading, we feel the same. But in the Tiangong module, to make our life and work more convenient, we have to find what is up and what is down, and we define that the direction towards the Earth is down, and we lay floor on that. Now I will show you a toy. We played it when we were very young. So the teacher is now showing the students a toy. But kids play when they were little. It is a spin, a gyroscope. The gyroscope that is spinning fast have good stability. And the good stability applies both in space and on the Earth. So many of the equipments can achieve good stability by using the gyroscopes. And in the Tangle module, we have some instruments using this principle to measure the position of the space probes. And now, I will show you a phenomenon that is hardly seen on the Earth, but is easily real achievable in a weightless environment. Now I put this in the air and exert a force on that. And what happened? It is now spinning forward. And the axis has changed a lot. Well, let's now get some insight from our studio guest, Mr. Wei Yujie from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, so this kind of phenomenon is quite unusual on the ground. I mean, you don't see it on Earth unless you're in a simulated environment. Right. But in space, it's, it's quite amazing. That's correct. That's all because of the loss of the gravity. That's, uh, on ground, we, that's a, that's a force pointing down to the Earth, and uh, here we don't have this uh, limitation. And uh, also remember that uh, the space station is also rotating at a very, very fast speed, about, uh, I think it's 28,000 uh, kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. So that makes another big difference. Things are so different, uh, 300, 300 kilometers above us, um, the way they move is, is very different. Yeah, if you look carefully, uh, in the inside, you see lots of knobs, and that's how, that's how the astronauts control the motion. You see lots of uh, knobs in the top and in the wall. 
It's because if you if the astronaut is moving, if they don't contact the other body, they cannot stop themselves. So they are moving because of outside force. Yeah. They can only stop the motion by external force. It looks like magic. It, it, it looks as if there's um, a wire linking yes. these two things together. Uh, Newton had three basic laws of motion yeah. that changed our life forever, and this one is based on which? I think all three of those uh, in play, Newton had three la basic laws. And all the three were yes. So Newton's laws of motion were considered the best, um, the best mechanics law until Albert Einstein's relative gra gravity came into being. Is that correct? I think I would say most of it is still consider Newton's law to be the best because that's how we start all science and engineering. It was, he yeah. was a pioneer yeah. in classic mechanics. And now it's time to play those down 3,000 chains. Because in the weightless motion, it is impossible to have a cascade. Now I will squeeze a little droplet. Look at these lovely, beautiful little droplets. It, does it remind you the word translucent? I would like to make some a few more and uh, make a necklace for you. Okay. In order to avoid it from floating around, I will retrieve it in a very special way. I can just uh, have some drink to clear my throat. So this demonstration shows two important concepts. It's why it's um, no gravity, the other one is surface tension in water. So we're talking about interdisciplinary here. Yes. It's not just one aspect of physics, but um, they combine different rules together. Yes. First of all, I will open the bag containing the water. And then I will put the metal ring in it very slowly. And then very gently, I will pull it out. OK, everybody, this is where magic happens. I made a very beautiful water film. Is this, is this the same that would happen on the ground? I mean, back on Earth? Uh, sometimes we can do so. Uh, if the if the size is small enough, because uh, I just mentioned about the surface tension. So when the two different materials in contact, they can reduce the surface energy. So you reduce the surface tension. Too. So you see the membrane of water membranes sticking to the original steel cycles it's because of the interface between water and the steel they apply tension to the membrane and it's like a stretching the shoe and uh, just a little reference here elasticity is a physical property of materials which return to their original shape after they are deformed and uh, I remember back in school, teachers would ask us uh, why we can make bubbles out of soap water or why mosquitoes can stand on the surface of water. That's all because of the surface tension coming into play. Right. Next, I will try to press a Chinese knot onto the water film. 
and see if it can sustain this Chinese knot. Okay, we press the Chinese knot gently onto the film. There we go. Isn't it amazing? Well, the bottom membrane seems undestroyable. So this water film is quite solid. Well, I think our astronaut is better defined as a magician other than a teacher. In space, because we're experiencing zero gravity, we have a lot of phenomena that is rarely seen on the Earth. And more magic will come later. Do you want to witness that? Let's try some. We're now about 25 minutes into this class, and I'm already fascinated. Uh, if you've just joined us, you're watching our live coverage from China's uh, live coverage of China's first uh, space class. China's second woman astronaut Wang Yaping is now performing some physical experiments, and back on Earth, 60 million teachers and students are watching it live across China. And earlier in this class, she performed experiments based on Newton's second law of motion. And now, as our, uh, as our um, teacher explained, is water tension. So if we put more water onto the film, what will happen? Now, I will slowly inject water onto the film. Now, the film is becoming thicker and thicker. So, Mr. Wei, M Mr. Wei, did this water membrane um, it, does it burst at all in space? Uh, if there's no external uh, disturb, disturbance, they will remain in shape. That's mainly because you can see that uh, if we add a small droplets into the big one, but yes, that's growing. also an outside force. Right. That's basically because the, if they form one big uh, sphere, and if we compare the surface area, which is proportional to the energy, so they try to minimize the surface area. So if you wow. break this into two parts, you ge generate the extra surface area. So that's not comfortable to the system. So they try to bring together and stay in the lower st energy level. So what it's, it's really amazing to see how a water membrane has become a crystal ball. You can see there are some little bubbles in this water sphere. Do you know why? It is because just now when we are injecting the water, this water bag contains some airs, some air. So now we are trying to get these bubbles out. There's no way that's going to happen on Earth. That's true. So we usually see the bubbles uh, flow out uh, to the surface and then back. <laughs> There's the reflection of our teacher in that water membrane. Yanqing, are you are you amazed? Are you fascinated by this class? It's yes, really amazing. Uh, Mr. Wei, is this phenomenon called uh, the cohesion of water? Is that? 